All right, what's up guys? We're doing a mock draft in today's video. This is my first official mock draft video of the 2023 draft season. I hope you guys enjoy. There will be one trade. Uh, we're going to discuss the possibilities of trades whenever we think they're applicable. Um, but without further ado, 31 picks. Let's dive right in. And with the Bears on the clock at number one overall, they need a lot of help. This is a class where teams are going to want to try and trade up to get Bryce Young and I think the Bears only have two trade options I think they would go back one spot to Houston at two or to the team that we are going to trade with and that is Indy at pick four and the Bears do not have pick 32 the first pick of the second round normally pick 33 because of the Miami Dolphins uh that is now pick 32 so I do think four 35 and a two next year from Indy would fit the bill to get number one. Um, I Early in the draft season, there, there were talks like, oh, they might have to trade three number ones to move up three spots. I don't think that's going to be the case. And I think this right here, to move up three spots, would get it done. And Indy, with the first overall draft pick, Shane Steichen's quarterback of the future, would be Bryce Young from Alabama. Now, with Houston on the clock at two, with the D'Amico Ryan's era. D'Amico is a guy from Alabama, and I've heard at least like the acknowledgement that, you know, they might not take a quarterback if they're not in love with one and kind of hope they get Caleb Williams next year. For those that may not know, Caleb won the Heisman Trophy this year from USC or, or at USC. He is going to be one of the best quarterback prospects we've seen over the past 10 years. But I don't think Nick Casario, the general manager, can go into this draft banking on that. So I think they take a quarterback, and I think that guy would be here at number two. I think that guy would be C.J. Stroud from Ohio State. So no surprise, back-to-back -back quarterbacks are off the board. And with Arizona, they need football players. Their roster is not good um of course they have some pieces here and there but they they just need flat out good football players and i think they would go with will anderson um just on the emphasis of how much getting after the quarterback is not to say jalen carter can't get after the quarterback because he obviously can um i'm fine with either player here in this scenario i think they would prefer will anderson but like i said i'm fine with either player and obviously chicago is on the clock uh it's pretty easy selection here jalen carter would be the guy so now we have an interesting situation with Seattle at number five. To me, I've been mocking this to them quite a bit. I think it is Tyree Wilson. There is another player that we'll discuss soon. I wouldn't hate him being mocked here, and I'll bring that up when we do mock him to another team. But I think the player is Tyree Wilson. He's six foot six, two seventy five, uh, relentless motor. I like Tyree quite a bit. Um, Detroit is now up on the clock at number six. And early in the year, if you remember all the way back to week three, the Lions held Justin Jefferson to a career low three receptions for 14 yards. And that was, it was a huge deal because, you know, they figured out, and that was also after the Eagles held Justin Jefferson to six catches for 48 yards. Um, Justin went on to win the offensive player of the year. So he had a pretty good year, all things considered. Um, but the second time they played, Justin had a career high. I think he, it was 223. I'm not sure that off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure it was 223. Um, and the point of the matter or the fact of the matter is they, they need corner help. Devon Witherspoon is a player Dan Campbell is going to love. And it's a player that realistically, I, I think he's going to be there. I don't think, I mean, none of these, he, Devon Witherspoon is not going to be a top four pick, obviously with Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. And there's even a chance that Will Levis or Anthony Richardson are selected in the top four, which would only help Devon Witherspoon fall down the board even more. Uh, but Detroit has a good pass rush led by Aiden Hutchinson. And good pass rush obviously helps out good secondary play. They coincide with each other. And I think Witherspoon makes a lot of sense. He's feisty as hell. And uh, it's a player that Dan Campbell will love. Now, Las Vegas at pick seven is a bit of a tough cookie because we don't know what they're going to do with the quarterback situation this offseason. Obviously, they just released Derek Carr, um, and Derek Carr has been, I want to say, in contact with the Saints, so I think he's going to be visiting there. He also could visit Carolina as well. 
meaning they could they could sign or they could trade for Aaron Rodgers this offseason. Devontae's been pretty vocal about that on Twitter. The results we saw in Green Bay for the span of seven years, pretty good, I would say. Um, but because we don't know that at this point in time, I think they would go Will Levis. And, you know, you're in a division with Patrick Mahomes, uh, Justin Herbert now, Sean Payton, and Russell Wilson. Will Levis obviously isn't going to win them a division title in the in the first year of his career, maybe ever for that matter, because you'd have to win one eventually over Patrick Mahomes, which is a very, very uh, tall task. And, you know, it's a very difficult thing to do, but I do think Will Levis uh, being in a situation with who we presume to be Josh Jacobs receiving either the franchise tag or contract extension, and then, of course, Devontae Adams, not, a, not an awful situation to walk into. And... That brings us to the Atlanta Falcons at number eight overall. And one player that I said at five that I wouldn't hate for the Seahawks is a player. Sorry, I scrolled down the wrong one here. I would not hate the Seahawks taking Miles Murphy and Edge from Clemson. I love Miles. I think he is athletic as hell. There's a lot of bend in his game. He is he's a very, very good edge rusher. Atlanta needs edge in the worst way. Um, they addressed it in the 2022 draft with Arnold Abicade and D'Angelo Malone. D'Angelo Malone was a player that I thought was going to be not necessarily like an eight or nine sack player as a rookie, but I thought he'd, you know, be a good situational pass rusher, and he only had seven total pressures as a rookie. So it was kind of an underwhelming year for D'Angelo Malone. Um, so I think they try and address that in the first round this year, go Miles Murphy. And for anybody that pays attention to players that went back, uh, Jared Verse went back to Florida State. This was a player that was mocked here quite often, and it made a lot of sense. Um, but Jared Verse will more than likely, unless he does something catastrophic, he will be a first-round pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. A player that I would have liked here, but... Anyway, we're on to Carolina at pick nine, and they, like the Raiders, they can't leave the first round without a quarterback. So, I don't know how you guys feel about Anthony Richardson but he's going to be a first round pick and I think he leaves this mock draft or this the first round here as a Carolina Panther again there's going to be some things in mock drafts that we don't know like where's Derek Carr going is Aaron Rodgers going to get traded Aaron Rodgers could also be traded to the Jets Um, but there's a lot of what ifs right now but I like Anthony Richardson to the Panthers at nine because they have to leave the first round with a quarterback and if they don't then they have to have like a Derek Carr or as we said Aaron Rodgers they have to they have to have one of those guys if they're not leaving the first round with the quarterback all right Philadelphia is on the clock and James Bradbury is a free agent Darius Slay whether you guys know this or not has been in the league for quite a long time he was a second round pick back in 2013 um and the the slide that players have towards the end, especially on the defensive side of the ball, it's it's not really a slide. It's usually more of just like we're playing good and then boom. Like it's it's typically a fall. Not to say Darius Slay is going to have that next year, but you have to draft ahead of that and anticipate that. And I think Christian Gonzalez makes a ton of sense. Christian Gonzalez is a big corner from Oregon. Um, I think he is... I think he was also the best player on the board. I think he makes a ton of sense for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, They need to find a long-term starter there. And I know they made the Super Bowl this year. And great congratulations to them on all the success they had in 2022. But James Bradbury and Darius Slay are not going to be your starting corners two or three years from now. They're not. Darius Slay would not be a 13-year vet starting out there playing at the level that he did for most of the 2022 season. So, I like Christian Gonzalez quite a bit. And with that insane pass rush they have, we mentioned it with Devon Witherspoon at 6 for the Lions, pass rush and secondary go hand in hand. So, I think Christian Gonzalez could slide right in as a starter, play pretty good right out of the gate, and uh, Philly would have a four or five year starter at minimum in Christian Gonzalez. All right, next up, Tennessee Titans. To me, this is the easiest pick, at least like relative to where we are in the draft, aside from like Bryce Young or CJ Stroud at one and two. Um, but it, it, to me, it's Peter Skaronsky. Look, Vrabel, if there's one thing that Mike Vrabel hates, it is getting beat in the trenches. It is getting beat, you know, where we're trying to be physical. You know, we want to, you know, dominate the game, show everybody, you know, the the meat and potatoes of what we have. We we don't want to throw the ball for 500 yards a game. We don't want to, you know, have multiple receivers go for over a thousand yards. We want to run the football down your throat. We want to be the more physical team. And in a lot of ways, they want to be the Detroit Lions of the AFC or the Lions want to be the Titans of the NFC. So 
Peter Skaronski makes a lot of sense. Dennis Daly, after Taylor Luan went down to a, due to a torn ACL, his second ACL tear in three years, he makes so much sense. I think Skaronski is going to be scrutinized in the draft process for his arm length, which I understand the concerns there, but I think it's a little, I don't want to say overdone, but it's, I mean, Skaronski's a hell of a player, man, and it's, he's going to be a first round pick, rightfully so, and I think he's going to slide in and be a high floor starter for the Titans for several years. All right, next up is the Houston Texans, and they need to get CJ Stroud a weapon. The Texans are going, to, Brandon Cooks will not be a Texan next year. That's kind of the way that it is. Uh, the Texans do not have a lot of good receiving options on the roster. Obviously, what happened with John Mechie is awful. John Mechie last year was their second round pick from Alabama. Uh, he had leukemia, missed his entire rookie year. Uh, forget football, throw it out the window. We want John Mechie to be okay and to live a good life. So throw football out the window. That's, I mean, it's pretty simple. John Mechie, we wish him the best, but they need to address the receiver position. And Quentin Johnston is a good target for CJ Stroud. He's a big target. Now, Quentin Johnston at times doesn't play like a true 6'4 receiver, but when Quentin Johnston makes the the plays, the highlight reel plays, his his highlight reel plays are as good as anyone. There are concerns with Quentin Johnston, don't get me wrong. But I think CJ throwing to him would be in the best interest of not only CJ Stroud, but the future of the Houston Texans. And I like Quentin Johnston at 12 quite a bit. All right, next up is the New York Jets. And I think this this is a pretty easy pick here. Uh, Makai Becton has been a disappointment relative to where he was drafted. He's He hasn't been able to stay on the field. The Jets need a tackle. I, I By the way, just so we're clear, I'm, I'm not taking Tanner McKee. I'm definitely not taking Hendon Hooker or Aiden O'Connell. Uh, to me, the, the pick right here, Paris Johnson. I like Paris Johnson as a draft prospect quite a bit. I think that's an easy pick. Paris Johnson sliding in at tackle makes a lot of sense for the Jets. Um, and if the Jets trade for Aaron Rodgers, we're of course going to be talking about the Jets trading for Rodgers and the Raiders trading for Rodgers the most out of anybody. I mean, the Jets would be thrown immediately into deep AFC contention. They were a set. They started out seven and four last year, unfortunately lost their final six games, um, but they put up 15 combined points in their final three games. They put up six points, six points, and three points. That's in no order. Um, but they need offensive line help. Joe Flacco quarterback, obviously not the long-term answer. So they're going to do something this off season again, whether that's Derek Carr or Aaron Rodgers. but Paris Johnson is hopefully the tackle of the future for the New York Jets. All right, next up is the New England Patriots. And for as much as we talk about Justin Fields and not knowing if he is or is not the answer there, I think that can just as easily be applied to Mac Jones. Uh, Mac Jones has not had a lot of help. Obviously, you guys can see on the screen that we have the receiver position uh, pulled up. But Mac Jones, I mean, guys, he had like three wide receiver threes last year. That's what he was working with. Uh, Demir Bird, Jacoby Myers, Devontae Parker. And even if you want to say they're wide receiver twos, that's fine. But they need a guy that can get open. And there's a player that played pretty close to where the Patriots facility is, Boston College. Zay Flowers is a terrific route runner. He makes a lot of sense to go there. Mac Jones needs a guy that can get open to where he's not throwing a lot of contested passes, you know, or a lot of contested catches rather. Zay Flowers makes a lot of sense for the Patriots. He's a terrific route runner and he's a, to me, he's a day one starter for them and a player that Mac Jones can trust to get open, find holes in the defense and it's a weapon that the Patriots desperately need. And the player that, well, a player the Packers need is they also need an offensive weapon, whether that's receiver or tight end. Uh, personally, I'm going to be giving them Michael Mayer. I think Michael Mayer is the best tight end in the draft. Um, I know PFF has Dalton Kincaid is technically the best tight end in the draft. They have him at 25 overall, and they have Michael Mayer at 28. Um, I prefer Michael Mayer to Dalton Kincaid. I think he's just a better football player and the Packers would be getting rid of a 38 year old Mercedes Lewis who's been in the league since 2006. So it makes a ton of sense. Give uh, who we presume to be at this point, Jordan Love some weapons. Uh, don't make the same mistake with Aaron Rodgers of not drafting offensive playmakers in the first round. Give him, give him Michael Mayer, 
And uh, if Jordan Love does not work out, then give that next guy Michael Mayer as well. Because Michael Mayer will be a solid starter at the NFL level for quite some time. I think this is going to be a pick with Michael Mayer, you know, that some teams may look back and think to themselves, why didn't we just take a player that we knew was going to be a multiple year starter? You know, a like six, seven year starter. Mayer is going to be, he's going to be a solid, solid player. And quite honestly, obviously at the tight end position, it is dependent upon a volume, but I'd be surprised if Mayer is not a multiple time pro bowler. He He's that good of a football player. It shows up time and time again on tape. I love Michael Mayer. And as a Vikings fan, I would, I would hate that pick having to defend him two times a year. Anyway, the Washington commanders are up. There's, they are also in the quarterback conversation, uh, with the jets and Raiders and even the Panthers for that matter. You know, what are they going to do? And the same thing applies um, spoiler, Tanner McKee will not be a first round pick in today's mock. Um, but what we are going to do with the commanders is look, AJ Brown, CD lamb, Devonta Smith, they need to figure out a way to stop them. Their defensive line is very good. Uh, we're going to give them a corner. It's going to be Joey Porter Jr. Joey Porter Jr. is a big corner. He's going to match up well against someone like AJ Brown. Now, will AJ get his against Joey Porter, uh, early on? Absolutely. Yes. I mean, A.J. Brown just had a near 1,500-yard year. He's going to get his, so will C.D. Lamb. But the, you you have to have a game plan of how to stop these guys. So when that's a quarter of your schedule is going up against A.J. Brown and C.D. Lamb and Devontae Smith, for that matter, there has to be a way to s slow them down. And Joey Porter Jr. immediately, uh, I'm not going to say resolves that problem, but he cuts into that problem, and he will try and stop that. Anyway, next up is the Pittsburgh Steelers. And uh, I actually released a video on the Steelers on Thursday, and a player that I love mocking to them is Broderick Jones. Uh, tackle Dan Moore Jr. was a developmental guy. In his first two seasons of his career, he's given up seven sacks in each season. Um, there's times where you watch the Steelers play, and Kenny Pickett is immediately just running to the right side of the field. Um, whether it's by design by offensive coordinator Matt Canada to try and just get him away from the left side so we don't have to deal with Dan Moore potentially giving up a pressure, which could potentially from Kenny's blind side, you know, have a pass rusher just hit, hit his backside of his arm and uh, cause a fumble. So there's a reason for that. Uh, Dan Moore was not trusted out on the left side. Slide in Broderick Jones, a multiple-time national champion of Georgia. And uh, beef up the trenches, and that not only that not only helps Kenny, but that also helps Najee Harris as the Steelers finish 26th in rushing yards in the NFL in 2022, despite finishing 10th in rushing attempts. So I like that pick quite a bit, and uh, we are now moving on to Detroit at pick 18. All right, this is a pick uh, like how we love Devon Witherspoon at six. We give them Brian Brzee. I like Brian Brzee to the Lions um, for a couple of reasons. We always hear, you know, situation matters for quarterbacks, and that's true. Obviously, it does, but it also matters for defensive linemen. You know, Brzee's walking into a situation where he has Aiden Hutchinson on the defensive line. Um, they're going to do everything they can to make this transition seamless for Brzee. Um, I think when you have a player that's been as mocked as high as Brzee has, he's been mocked in the top 10 or 12 picks before, I think it's going to be, I don't want to say a seamless transition because the interior part of the NFL, the interior trenches is difficult for any player to transition to, but offensive lines, opposing offensive lines are not going to focus on Brian Brzee uh, the way they would Aiden Hutchinson. So I think it's going to be a lot of favorable matchups for him. And if he is going to succeed at the NFL level, I do think it would be in a place like Detroit. All right, next up is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There's a lot of places we could go here. Ultimately, in what is the post-Tom Brady era, I'm giving them a good football player, Brian Branch, have a good secondary or a good safety duo of Branch and Antoine Winfield Jr. Um, I think it's pretty, just being honest here, you, you don't have to worry about this this duo for five to six, maybe seven years if you're lucky, depending on how long Winfield plays. Take Branch, he's a hell of a football player, and... Like I said, just don't worry about it. You know, now we can address other holes. We can address the quarterback position, who they will also be in the Jimmy G, maybe Aaron Rodgers conversation, depending on money, of course. That's an entirely different conversation. Um, but take Brian Branch, pair him with Winfield Jr., and just let them cook. 
All right, next up is the, the Seattle Seahawks. And Tyler Lockett's getting old. Jordan Addison makes a lot of sense for Geno. And then whether Geno works out long-term, that maybe that next guy. But if you have a receiving duo of DK Metcalf and Jordan Addison, first off, I think they complement each other extremely well. And then for however long Lockett would play, a trio of Addison, Metcalf, and of course Lockett. I love it. I think it makes a ton of sense. We also gave them uh, Tyree Wilson at pick five. P. Carroll did say that they wanted to address the defensive line. So Seattle walks out of the first round by addressing the defensive line as they were ran on time and time again in 2022. Uh, the Panthers came in and ran for over 200 yards against them, for example. And you also help out Geno and get him a very good receiver in Jordan Addison. So I like this quite a bit. And now we are on to what may be the spiciest pick in the first round. I might take a lot of heat for it, or you guys might think this is very smart. Uh, but guys... Jalen Hyatt to the Chargers. Now, here's the reasoning for that because I know a lot of people are going to be either applauding the pick or thinking that I'm a complete dumbass. No in between. But guys, Jalen Hyatt's speed is unreal. You have to play. You have to play too high with Jalen Hyatt on the field. You you have to be able to take away the deep ball. If if he gets by a corner, he's gone. Like as as cliche as it sounds, if he gets by a corner and with the way the Tennessee aligned Jalen Hyatt at Tennessee, that what they did was they'd have a receiver in front of him, they'd line Jalen behind a receiver in a, in a stack formation, so that no corner could jam Jalen at the line of scrimmage. So by the time that Jalen would get to where the corner was, Jalen would be four or five steps into 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 his route. So there's no reason that Kellen Kellen Moore, the new Chargers offensive coordinator, can't call motions for him, can't design him open. And with Jalen Hyatt on the field, defenses have to account for him. There is no, ah, oh, well, he's just, you know, this guy. Like, you have to account for him every single play. So if you have on an offense with Justin Herbert, who, uh, whether you like Justin or not, think he's top five or not, whatever, he can throw the ball a country mile. And if you have him, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, I love Jalen Hyatt to the Chargers. Keenan Allen's future in LA is, that's a conversation for another day, but I like Jalen Hyatt to the Chargers quite a bit. You have to, you have to account for him. And that's, that's the biggest thing with this pick. And you cannot not run a too high coverage uh, with Jalen Hyatt on the field. So love Jalen Hyatt there and Kellen Moore would be creative for him. And this is something that the Chargers missed a lot in 2022 was having a legitimate deep threat. And they kind of underused Justin Herbert quite a bit. He was like, he finished the like the year like 25th in passing or uh, excuse me, yards per attempt, which is very disappointing for how good of a player Justin Herbert is. So love Jalen Hyatt. And next up is the Baltimore Ravens. Corner did not shake out well. For the Baltimore Ravens, I think Deontay is a little high. I don't think he's the 23rd best player in the class. As you can see, the average uh, drafting place for Deontay Banks is 57th. So I think that's a little high for him. Um, but what we are going to give the Baltimore Ravens, we're going to pair Jackson Smith the Jigba with Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman has had an underwhelming uh, first two years, both due to injury and then simply not getting the ball as much as you could argue he should have. Um, but... If we have JSN, Rashad Bateman, Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson, and J.K. Dobbins all on the field at once, that's going to stress opposing defenses out in a big, big way. So I love JSN to the Ravens. Next up is the Minnesota Vikings. Now, I did say Deontay Banks is a little rich at 22, but I like Deontay Banks to the Vikings quite a bit. They just hired Brian Flores as a defensive coordinator. He's a big, tall, physical corner. I think Deontay is a solid corner. 23 may be a little bit of a reach, but if you have a corner room of Deontay Banks, Andrew Booth, a veteran Pat Peterson, a Caleb Evans, who was a fourth round pick last year, and then have a safety duo of Harrison Smith and Lewis Seen, I don't think this secondary is as hopeless as some people may think, or at least the way that some people perceive based on the 2022 season. All right, next up is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, it's pretty simple. Gainesville is not too far from Jacksonville. They watched Osiris Torrance. I love giving them offensive line help. They have Calvin Ridley. They have Christian Kirk. They have Travis Etienne. I would assume Evan Ingram will be back. Or at least I hope he's back. Um, but Osiris Torrance, keep helping that offense out. And this team went from the number one pick to losing in the divisional round of the playoffs for a reason. Buy in. The Jags future is very bright. And I like Osiris Torrance to the Jags quite a bit. Now, out of all teams here, 
the receiver run that we had from 20 to 22, this is an awful break for the Giants. It is. And I don't like Kincaid at 25. Not a huge fan of Musgrave going here either. So this is going to be a pick that, again, it's going to be another controversial one, but I like Trenton Simpson, and I'm also not a fan of him going 50, or him being the 59th best player in the class. And Henley from Washington State, I don't think he's 21 spots better than Trenton Simpson. Um, Jalen Smith was a problem for the Giants. I think that's a thing that all Giants fans would agree on. So not the best pick in this mock. Also, I think this is what would happen, not necessarily what I would do. I also think the Giants would be looking to trade back in that situation. Um, but I think Trenton Simpson, in terms of how the board broke, I think that would be the best case scenario for them. Now, with Dallas on the clock, there's a player that I desperately wanted to give them. I'm not going to. That player would be Bijan Robinson. I'm not going to give them Bijan Robinson. I think it's going to be kind of like 2020 whenever C.D. Lamb inexplicably fell to them at 17. I know everybody likes to criticize Jerry Jones, the general manager at times, rightfully so. But I think he would just look at the board and say, Lucas Van Ness is available. He fell quite a bit. We're going to take him and just we're going we're going to take Lucas Van Ness and it's uh, not going to be a problem. He's going to be a starter for us for hopefully several years. Admittedly, I'm not the biggest Lucas Van Ness fan, but... I think he is the best player available in that situation. All right, next up, Buffalo Bills. Now, this is another team, like we said, with the Giants at 25. The board did not break for them favorably at all. Uh, you look at the interior offensive line, I think it's a little early for John Michael Schmitz, and I do think Schmitz is better than Whipler, Luke Whipler from Ohio State and Steve Avia from TCU. I would actually prefer to uh, flip Michael Schmitz's ranking and Steve Avia's at minimum. Um, so I think it's a little early for that, uh, but as much as I'd love to go offensive line, defensive line, Kalijah Kansi is not the player you want for the Bills based on how they lost in the postseason. The Bengals were running the ball down their throat, and as much as I like Kalijah Kansi, Kalijah Kansi is six feet tall, 280 pounds. You know, he's not he's not Siaki Ika, who's 350 pounds, who is that just big bowling ball in the middle of the defense. Um, there's a chance, there's a good chance that Kalijah Kansi, especially in year one, gets moved around in the interior run game. I mean, he's 280 pounds going against guys that will be 315, 320 every play. So I don't think that's the best fit for the Bills. And we're going to give them Bijan Robinson. Now, I like Bijan quite a bit. I think he is one of the, I think he's a top 10 player in this class in terms of talent. He is one of the best running backs I've ever evaluated. Roger Saffold will needs that will need to be addressed at some point. I think John Michael Schmitz would make sense for the Bills to trade up to get in the second round, but I'm not a fan of John Michael Schmitz at 27 overall, especially when Bijan is there. So, uh, Bijan going to Buffalo also alleviates some of the hits that quarterback Josh Allen would take. So I like Bijan at 27 quite a bit. Next up is Cincinnati, and I think there's a couple ways. We can look at this. I like Anton Harrison from Oklahoma. There's another player that I'm thinking about taking here for the Bengals, and I would be thinking about taking Darnell Washington. If you know anything about Darnell, he is 6'7", 270. Darnell is truly like a sixth offensive lineman out there, and I'm fine with either Darnell Washington or Anton Harrison. And we're going to take Anton Harrison today, but like I said, Darnell Washington in that offense with Jamar and T Higgins on the field at the same time, that would stress, and I mean stress, opposing defenses out. I'm fine with either player. We're giving them Anson Harrison in today's mock. All right, next up is the New Orleans Saints. Uh, they they need a lot of help. They need a lot of help. Cam Jordan is old. He's been in the league since 2011. Marcus Davenport is a question mark. I don't think he's going to be re-signed. Uh, so we're going to give them Andre Carter, the edge from Army. Um, player, he's a big he's a big edge, and he's defensive line help that the Saints desperately need. Like I said, the Saints need good football players, and uh, I like Andre Carter to the Saints quite a bit. Now. For anyone wondering when the Kalijah Kansi uh, slide will stop, it stops here. Uh, you pair Kalijah Kansi with Jordan Davis from last year's draft. Jordan Davis is, of course, the 6'6", 340-pound defensive tackle from Georgia. 
that's a hell of an interior defensive line. So Philly walks out of the first round uh, with Christian Gonzalez, corner from Oregon, and Kalijah Kansi, the defensive lineman from Pitt. I think Kalijah Kansi going to Philly makes a lot more sense uh, than it does some other teams down the stretch here. I would honestly be surprised if Kansi makes it to 30. He did in today's mock, obviously. Um, but Kansi in that defense would be hell for opposing offensive lines because he could really pin his ears back, get to the quarterback, and it wouldn't surprise me if he had five or six sacks as a rookie, which for a defensive tackle is a lot. So I like Kansi to the Eagles quite a bit, and that leaves us with one player left in today's mock. And guys, I'm a huge BJ Ojolari fan, and that's what we are going to give the Chiefs. Frank Clark is getting up there in age. If you pair BJ Ojolari and George Karloftis uh, as edges for the next five or six years, Chris Jones had a hell of a season in 2022. He had 97 total pressures. Um, I think BJ Ojolari makes a lot of sense. The Chiefs still have to get after the quarterback. I know a lot of teams draft to try to beat the Chiefs. You know, how can we get after Patrick Mahomes? But the Chiefs still have to draft to get after Joe Burrow, get after Josh Allen, and to ultimately stay on top as defending Super Bowl champions. BJ Ojolari, good situational pass rusher as a rookie and I think he would make a big impact in late January. This is today's mock draft. Um, as you guys can see, I we will scroll down here just so we can see the, uh, the other picks. Actually, I think we got it all on the screen there. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's mock. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you are interested in supporting the channel, uh, I did create a Patreon recently. So if you would be so kind to go to the Patreon, I would very much appreciate that. But until next time, guys, as always, please be safe. Have a great day. Hope you guys enjoyed. Love you guys.